I'm Luke Hatfield. I'm joined by Matt Wilson, our West Brom correspondent. We're here at the Hawthorns after West Brom's 4-1 win. Despite their league position, Matt, West Brom are not fast starters, are they? No, they're not. Um, a crazy game in many ways. Um, you know, I think I put in the match before that the old cliche, a game of two halves. Yeah. It's never been, you know, more um, distinctly felt than it was here today because, first off, they were absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Um, sluggish all over the pitch. There was so. No, no movement, no energy, you know, there was no verve, no the passing, the, the speed of passing was slow. Um, they got in behind a couple of times, but I thought Reading played really well and yeah. they were organised and compact and then they hit them on the break a couple of times. And obviously they got the goal in the sixth minute when they caught them napping. Yeah, um, dreadful goal to concede to be honest. Shouldn't have conceded it. Um, I think Livermore, who, had, who has been brilliant this season but had a pretty poor game today, uh, didn't rush out and, and Bakuna fires it in to the far post and that, it was they deserved to be 1-0 up at half time Reading and, and at half time you're thinking oh, hang on this something could happen here um, but then you know whatever Darren Moore's saying at half time seems to be working because yeah. pretty much throughout the season they've improved after the break um, they picked up the pace obviously they got the goal through uh, Dwight Gale three minutes in um, mm -hmm. again a goal that Reading really shouldn't have conceded mm -hmm. Tyrone Mears got the assist um, but his looping cross should never have made to Gale mm. and then that sort of sparked Alvin into life I thought the substitutions helped I thought Brunt and Carl Edwards both played well when they came on particularly yeah. um, you know Edwards was, was, was playing right wing back which is a role that he's probably not used to had to do some defensive work but he showed his defensive work towards the end and Chris Brunt was picking passes forward which is what Alvin had lacked in the first half you know yeah. someone to, to, to play the ball into feet uh, to you know, into into Harvey Barnes and Barnes started to to exploit those spaces as we know he can. And then, you know, one one became two and two became three, and all of a sudden it was four one. And I think the pleasing thing for Down Moore would be the fact that they they scored two goals from set pieces as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's after scoring their first headed goal last week against Preston um, last weekend, they have now you know obviously Bartley popped up with a couple although I think the second one might have been given to Gale because I think Gale may have got a touch on the way through yeah. but two set piece goals as well which is another another weapon you know in their arsenal so um, yeah th the thing is it doesn't really matter if you start slow if you can if you can end games strongly and, and, mm. and blitz teams like that um, it was an odd game it didn't really feel like a 4-1 Darren yeah. Moore admitted that himself afterwards he said you know that was a difficult game the score doesn't reflect that um, but you know, when you've got so much firepower up front, and you're capable of, of extending games away from teams, and you know they seem to be finding the net with so much ease, particularly here at home. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to be you're, you're going to be difficult to beat, uh, difficult to beat, and difficult to difficult to catch. That's it. And the resilience is one thing which Darren Moore will obviously be thrilled with going in going in at half time a goal down. You know, teams can get their heads down and they can struggle to come out in the second. But Albion don't have that, and that's going to help them massively this season if they are going to make a, a concerted promotion push. Yeah, it is. I'd like to see them control the game from from the start more. Mm. Um, you know, there's only been a few occasions when that's been the case. I'm trying to think, QPR maybe, Millwall, Stoke. You could yeah. argue they were they were pretty good against Stoke. Um, so I'd like to see them control games from not to 90 minutes. But look, you know, there's seven matches unbeaten in the league. Uh, five wins and two draws on that run. They've got five wins in a row here. Yeah. They're scoring loads of goals. I mean, the stat of the day really is the fact that they've scored 31 league goals already this season, which is the yeah. same amount that they scored throughout the whole of last season. Mm. Uh, and we're in, what, the 5th of October? <laughs> this, they, they, they could quite easily score. I mean, they probably are going to score over 100 goals this season. Yeah. It's just whether they can... Um, well, if they keep everyone fit, but it's just whether they can, you know, win enough games against maybe the teams around them. Because mm -hmm. obviously that, that game against Middlesbrough and the draw away at Nottingham Forest, those sort of games, when when it comes to the crunch, are they going to be able to win those games? Now, beating teams like Reading 4-1, um, I mean even Bristol City aren't, aren't too bad, 4-2, and, uh, and hammering teams like that, I suppose that will get you only so far. Will, yeah. the, will that be enough to get you up automatically? I'm not sure. We don't know. I don't. I don't think the standard really is that good in the championship this season. I, I can't. I can't see a standout team at the moment. Um, you know, obviously at the moment Sheffield United are top and West Brom are second. Maybe Sheffield United will emerge as that standout team. Maybe West Brom will emerge as that standout team. Um, but at the moment, I, I've, I've yet to see one um, come out 
from the shadows and I think every team's got their got their uh, strengths and weaknesses um, but look Albion have, Albion have got we know what Albion's strengths are they're capable of scoring goals for fun and I think today proved that and I don't, you know, I don't know you, you, it's hard to pick holes really in a 4-1 win at home yeah. but there were a couple of things that I was a bit uh, concerned by I thought actually the starting 11 was arguably the wrong one mm. because you know they started so sluggishly and Darren Moore put that after the game he said that was down to the fact that they played midweek in Hillsborough well if that's the case then change the team up you know yeah. you, uh, the midfield looked a bit slow and sluggish I, th- I thought you know Tyron Mears I, I actually thought he started the game okay he played two really nice passes mm. early on one to Rodriguez down the wing and then one, to, one little inside to Livermore but he doesn't have the legs to be a wing back I don't think yeah. and you know he was m- sort of one more misplaced pass away from, from the crowd revolting to be honest yeah. um, and the cheers that came when he was bought off for Edwards you know that was the right sub to make at that time mm. um, but the cheers that came then were a bit hard to hear if yeah. that makes sense I completely understand why the fans want to make their opinions felt but it's still hard to hear you know a, a player be treated like that I suppose but yeah. you look I, I don't know whether he should have he shouldn't have been playing his third game in a week um, I thought Edwards did well when he came on perhaps he should have started but then you know he's not really a wing back I mean you ask yeah. him to do a job there that um, he's not done before I thought he acquitted himself well when he came on but could he have done it for 90 minutes I'm not sure um, so yeah there, there was that, but you know they won the game four one, so it, it's quite it's quite tough to to complain too much. Yeah, well, Darren Moore now will be thankful that he's got this international break as well. If he's if he is worried about fatigue in his squad. Yeah, I think I think we saw so that that they are tied, and you know there's a lot of experienced players in, in that team. You know when you've got <laughs> well worded, Matt. Well when worded. you've got players like Mears and you know and and, and Barry and um, you know others that are are, are the are the wrong side of thirty, as they say. Yeah, I think they'll be glad to be to get into the international break, lick their wounds, as Darren put it, and um, hopefully get likes of Phillips back. Yeah. Um, get him, get him back fit, get Sacco up to speed, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've got some options. Mm. Um, yeah, but they won for one, and you know, they roll on, and they they, they they are playing well, and and this Championship League table, which had looked really congested, just starting to stretch out a little bit, mm. and um, you know. Second in the league, seven games unbeaten. You can't, you can't complain too much. That's it. So not too many complaints for Albion here. For all the post-match reaction, make sure you stay with us. Expressandstar.com.